This is how you can make a Discord bot using Discord.js version 14, so let's go and get started. Before I show you how to do this, I'd like to say that if you're interested in getting the source code from any of the videos on my channel, you can go ahead and join a super god tier subscription on YouTube, or you can go ahead and get a god tier subscription on Discord. We also have the bot tier, which is a full zip file of the exact bot used in the tutorial videos, and we now have three bot packages that you can also get. Each one is based on a specific topic. All of this will be in the description below if you're interested, and with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so to start, you're going to go ahead and download two different downloads. The first is going to be Visual Studio Code, and the second is going to be Node.js. If you don't have these already, go ahead and download them. The links will be in the description below. If you do have these already, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step. So now we're going to go ahead and create a new Discord bot. So the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go over to the Discord developer portal. The link will also be in the description, and we're going to go ahead and click on New Application. We're going to go ahead and give it a name and we can go ahead and agree to the terms of service and we're going to go ahead and create so now we have our discord bot and you can give it as much information as you want so we could go ahead and give it a description like this is a new bot or something like that you could give it a icon and then we could also go ahead and add some other information in here like the terms of service and privacy policy but i'm going to go ahead and leave that out then we're going to go over to bot and we're actually going to go ahead and reset our token so that we can gain access and i'm going to go ahead and turn all of our intents on because this is not a verified bot and we can actually go ahead and use that information so you might as well just turn these on for now as well you can also go ahead and add a banner to your bot if you want to customize your bot even further so now i have a banner and like i said before we're going to go ahead and click on reset token yes do it and we can go ahead and get the 2fa code so we can access our token as well all right so now that we have our brand new token we're going to go ahead and save this so that we can use it later but if you leave this tab open you'll be able to copy it but as soon as you close it out you're going to have to reset your token to access a new token the other thing that you're going to need to get is your application id D, but we can actually get this later so now that we have our token and we've set up our bot a little bit in the developer portal let's go ahead and go over to oauth2 and we can go ahead and get our url to add the bot to our servers so we're going to go ahead and select our bot uh, right here and you could select a couple more things as well in here if you're interested in that but i'm just going to leave it as bot and we're going to give it administrator permissions as well and we are creating a guild install authorization url all right so now we can go ahead and actually copy this link and let's go ahead and go into our discord server all right so here we are let's go ahead and paste that url that we can use to add the bot to our servers and let's go ahead and add it to sk bot testing as well and we can go ahead and click on authorize so now that we're here, we have our brand new application. We have our name, we have our avatar, we have our banner, and we have our about me. And I think now when you create an app, if it's a public application, it auto adds this button here so you can add it to your servers. And you can actually use it everywhere using the user install commands. All right, so now that we have our brand new bot, let's also go ahead and copy our user ID and we can actually go ahead and send it in this channel so that we can use it later. So now we're going to go ahead and go over into my Discord server. You can go to discord.gg slash coding lounge. It's going to be discord.gg slash coding lounge. And you can go ahead and join that server or you could go ahead and click the link in the description. Now that you're here, we're going to go ahead and go over to resources and you can go ahead and click on the packages button right here. So you're going to go ahead and see our custom packages. So right now we only have the slash command package and the badge package, but by the time this video comes out, there's going to be a new package button, which is going to be called the Dev Toolkit Package, and that's the one you're going to go ahead and download. The slash command package is the current version, but this video is going to be the updated version with a bunch of new changes coming to the package. So that's what you're going to go ahead and download. Again, the Dev Toolkit package will be here as well. So when you click that link, it's going to go ahead and bring you to this Mediafire page. And all you have to do is go ahead and click on download. And then you can just go ahead and download it here. So now that we have it downloaded, let's go ahead and actually open our code. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my downloads. And we can open up our Dev Toolkit. And we have our Dev Toolkit file right here. So now we can actually go ahead and drag this right onto our desktop. And we can go ahead and close out of our zip. So now that we're in here, we have our package and we can actually go in and open this up. All right, so now that we have our file here, all we have to do is click in here. We can go ahead and delete 
the URL and we're going to type in CMD and click enter. Once we're in our terminal, we can do code space dot and we can open up our code. So again, we're going to be using Visual Studio Code for this. So make sure you downloaded that in the beginning and you're also going to need to install uh, Node.js like I said in the beginning as well. So now that we have our package, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have starting at the top, working our way down, and then we'll fill out all of our information and turn the bot on. So at the top, we have our buttons. This is going to be a button handler. Then we have our commands. So we have a couple of built-in commands in here. We have our ping command, we have our poke command, we have say, um, and we have a test schema command as well. Uh, after our buttons and commands, we also have our dropdowns, which is empty, but we will be using that in future videos. We have events. So this is going to be the guild join and guild leave. These are just console.log events that show when your bot joins a server or leaves a server. And then we have our ready.js, which actually has our MongoDB configuration in it. In the previous package, you had to set this up on your own, but right now with this package, it gives you that as well. And it also gives you a status that you can go ahead and change. We have our models handler, which is going to be another handler similar to the buttons. It handles models. We have our schemas, which is going to store data. We have our utilities, which is going to be basically everything the bot needs to run, including a bunch of different loaders and registers. We have our config.json, which has your token, your app ID, and your Mongo URL. And we have our index.js, which is going to be where you have your clients and basically where your bot turns on. It's also going to be your interaction create. So this is going to be where all of your commands are handled in here. All right. So now that we're familiar with the package and what it includes, let's go ahead and set it up. So the setup process is actually really easy. All we have to do is go over to our config and we're going to go ahead and get all of our information. So the first that we're going to need is our token. So let's go back over to the developer portal. And now we're going to have to reset the token again because I did not save it. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that we're in here, let's go ahead and copy and paste that token. I'll paste it at the very end. The next is going to be our app ID. So the app ID, we already pasted in here, but that's basically going to be the ID of your bot. So you can just right click and copy that ID and we can go ahead and paste it into your code here. And then lastly, we're gonna go ahead and get our Mongo URL. So again, I'll copy and paste this after we're done, but this is going to be your MongoDB URL. If you need help getting access to this, go ahead and watch the MongoDB video, which will be in the description. This is going to be what your bot is going to use to save any data you want to be in a schema. All right, so off of the recording, I went ahead and copy and pasted my Mongo URL as well as my token into our config. So now we are actually done setting this up. It's really, really easy. One thing that I'd like to point out that I actually modified this package with our command properties. I didn't really show this yet, um, but now if you wanted to do an admin command or an owner command, uh, you could go ahead and do that as well. And you can also add mod commands and uh, pretty much any other commands you want to use by using the format I've provided. Now this can be done by going over into a command and at the top doing admin to true or owner to true or any other property properties you use. All right, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and open up our terminal at the top. We're going to go ahead and click on new terminal. In here, it's going to go ahead and load and we can just do node space dots. Now, it's going to actually go ahead and turn on, but we're going to get an error and we're actually going to get a number of errors. Uh, so the first one that we have to fix is MongoDB. So we're going to go ahead and do npm i and we can do mongoose. So we're going to go ahead and install that mongoose package and we're going to go ahead and let that load in. Uh, and then once it's done, we can do no space dot again. Now this time it's going to go in and turn on for me, but if you get any more errors, make sure you install those packages using npm i. You can go ahead and install the discord.js package if that's necessary or any of the other packages you might need. But for me, my bot is now online. So as you can see, it loads all the commands and it refreshes the application commands and it logs in to the bot. It also connects to the database as well. So now let's go ahead and go over to our Discord server. We can go back into that testing server and we can go ahead and notice that our bot is actually online. Now it does have a streaming status and you can actually change that by going over to events and ready.js and then you could go ahead and change this to anything you want. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and change it to a custom status. We can comment out our URL. We could maybe say uh, turning on 
using dev toolkit or something like that. So now my bot is restarting. And as you can see, as soon as it restarts, we get our custom status. So that's how you can change that. Now let's go ahead and use a couple of the preset commands that have been added in to the bot. So these commands are, like I said, presets. They are commands that Music Maker and I have added uh, to essentially demonstrate the functionalities of the bot. So right now there's a couple of them. We have clicker, ping, poke, say, and then all of our schemas. So let's just go ahead and start with clicker. So now for some reason it says command is not defined. So this is what happens when you get an error and it's actually pretty good to see. But I actually realized that there was an error with the package itself. So I just went ahead and fixed that. So the package that you download will not have this issue. So we can actually go ahead and try to run that command again. And this time now we have our clicker. So we can actually go ahead and click the button and we can go ahead and click it as many times as we want. So we can continue to test out our commands. Let's go ahead and use ping. This is a basic slash command, nothing interesting really about it. Uh, then we can go ahead and do poke. So this is another button. We can go ahead and click on that button and it's gonna go ahead and give us our responses. Now, as you can see here, this is using the poke button. So if we go over to commands, we have a poke command and a button handler. So we can go ahead and click on poke. And as you can see, it uses our command and it adds our button that we create here, but then it actually uses our poke button so that within our index.js, it's able to run the command uh, that we use. And it's actually able to run the button uh, using the interaction button right here. So we essentially are able to run our button and initialize a response in a different file uh, than if we were to use one in this file uh, using a collector, which essentially makes the buttons last forever. Now to demonstrate this, I've actually gone ahead and restarted my bot and we should be able to use both of these buttons even though the bot has turned on and off and actually only the poke button is going to remain on because i believe we used the uh, collector for this click button but the poke button uses the handler that's integrated with the package so now let's go ahead and continue we have our say command we get a model and we can go ahead and say hello or something like that and we can go ahead and send it and now it says it so that's a Example of our model handler that's integrated into this package as well. For example, we have our say command that initializes the model. And then if we go over to our model, uh, we have our custom ID, which actually handles the response to that model. And then the last commands that we have are our schema commands. So let's go ahead and add a input to the schema and we can go ahead and get that schema uh, input. So now we have hello and we can go ahead and do the exact same thing again if we go ahead and add um, number two or something like that. I guess we could just send that. Uh, and then we go ahead and get it again. Now we have two different values saved in the schema. And now if we wanted to, we could actually go ahead and remove all the values in the schema. And then if we run the get command again, as you can see, no content was found. So essentially that is our built-in example of using MongoDB within this handler. Basically what we do is we have our command and this is actually using uh, subcommands and we go ahead and use MongoDB using our schemas here and that allows us to save any data and uh, delete all the data that we need to as well using our schema command here. And this can be used in various different use cases that we actually use within our videos here. And actually I believe the data, uh, the schema stuff is actually using either an admin command or an owner command. I actually think it's using an admin command. So if we were to switch over to a different account that does not have admin perms, we could actually go ahead and run any of the schema commands. Uh, and now it says only admins can use this command. And this functionality is built into the package as well. So that is all of the built-in functionality within the brand new dev toolkit package, which is our updated slash command package. Essentially what's unique about this is it actually has handlers for all the interactions that you could use. So we have command, handlers, obviously, uh, we have button handlers, we have select menu handlers, and we have model handlers, which allows you to uh, use a command to initialize and then allows you to use our handlers to actually uh, send a response, which actually makes these a lot more useful and a lot more easy to use within your bot. And in general, this just has a bunch of updated code as well, a little bit more uh, fresh and updated. And it also includes a lot more things that you previously had to add yourself, like command properties, 
and MongoDB as well. So if you do need any help with this, go ahead and join the server in the description below and use our help channels here and we'll be happy to help you out. And thank you again to Music Maker for actually coming up with the code and pretty much coding this entire project here, the Dev Toolkit. He was the one who wrote pretty much all of it. I only added a couple of things. So again, thank you to him. And you might as well just join the server anyways because it is a pretty good coding community and it's also where you're gonna get this package in the resources channel. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.